Ladies and gentlemen, me and my Ultra Ball are stoned off our fucking ass. It's been a hot minute too. For those of you who don't know, I don't like do drugs or anything. My cancer medication sometimes makes me feel euphoric, AKA high, and I haven't felt like this in months. So grab your balls and your bananas and your Sprite and your tier elements. Let's dive on into the top five rogue decks of this format. Let's diggity dive on into it, shall we? Hope you enjoyed that cute little intro with my stoner looking ass. Destroy the ever-living crap out of that subscribe button so we can get to 900 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. I'm currently looking at the channel. We are at 810, ladies and gentlemen. We are climbing it up. We're climbing it up. And it feels so good to be climbing up into those levels. So let's go ahead and talk about the top five road days. I hope you got a good laugh out of all that. At number five, and a little side note, I'm going to include kind of multiple decks here really quick off the top. Number five is going to be Grand freaking Maju. Grand Maju, Grand Maju, my friend. And along with that, I also want to include some honorable mentions along with Marincess and Sky Striker and Exosister. So the thing is with uh, the previous three that I just mentioned, these are good decks in their own right. Um, they're kind of decks that really everybody knows about and I wanted to cover five decks that maybe not a lot of people are really thinking about or that are on their radar. So I wanted to try and keep that in mind with this top five list. So the main one starting off now that I've said all that is Grand Maju, my friend. Grand Maju is the type of rogue deck that sits in the corner playing with itself and it looks up like this, and it's like, oh my god, it's so much meta, my friend. And then it comes in and just destroys everything with its like 8,000 plus attack ass. This deck is the best going second deck, I would argue right now, in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because there are so many good going second cards that the deck can play, and there's so many different ways to build the damn deck. Are they using the Golden Castle of Strongbird build? Are they just using danger cards? There are so many different ways that you can build the deck to go second, and there's so many different going second cards that you can play, whether it's Droplets, Dark Ruler, Evenly, Lightning Storm, Raigeki. It can play fucking, like, just one ofs because it can. Harpy's Feather Duster, Mind Control, Change of Heart, and then they also have the Rank 8 XC, like, Vampire Sucker thing with 3,000 attack, and they're like, hoo-hoo, I'm a Mind Control, you shit, I'm a Change of Heart, you other bitch, and then we're gonna make a Rank 8 Exceed, we're gonna mill four cards, and if you're playing tier elements, I'm gonna go cry, or I can just go D-Shift or the shit out of you and not even make the Vampire Sucker. So the deck is bananas when it pops off. Um, it loses if it goes first or if you don't have a good going first plan. But if you want something that is going to throw people the fuck off, yeah, Grand Maju is definitely the way to go. Also, these top five are in no particular order. I figured I'd mention that. At number four, shameless plug, because I came in 27th place with the fucking deck after my car got broken the fuck into. I will never live that down. Also, side note, they never did find the motherfucker. They told me that they dropped the case, so I'm pissed about that. But at number four, we have Eldritch, all versions of Eldritch. I was looking at my uh, tier list video here to remind myself where I put it in the ranking, and I put it at the Rogue ranking, and that, that's all forms of Eldritch. If people are not prepared for Eldritch, they're going to get their doo-doo stains pushed in like real talk the deck is busted af when it pops off and once you give it a couple turns to start building up its scarlet sanguines and its conks and its wakeros and all the other shit it's gonna pop off and it, people are gonna have a hard time with it especially if you're playing like the 60 card build i did where i had a mystic mine engine with like 15 fucking floodgates or something <laughs> like people are going to get pissed like my round three opponent at that Book of Raton regional I just mentioned, uh, Deck Profile on the channel, shameless plug. Uh, the dude was knew I was playing Eldritch. He saw my Eldritch engine. And now out of nowhere, I just pull out a branded fusion out of my ass. And he's just like, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, that's fine. Like, now he's playing on tilt because now he sees I'm playing branded and he's not prepared for it. And I knew he was salty AF because after the match, he's like, yeah, I should have made this play, this play, and da, da, da. And then when you played Skill Drain, I could have fucked you up. And I'm like, but I won though, right? <laughs> Sorry, I just, it, it's delicious. Um, so if you're playing Eldritch and people aren't prepared for it, whether it's locals, regionals, YCS, what have you, you're you're going to piss the shit out of people because people don't like set five decks. <laughs> whether it's Stun or Eldritch, people don't like that shit. At number three, I have, because I got to fucking mention it, because even though it didn't top nationals, hopefully the card gets banned, but Mystic Mind Burn. If you are not playing the Brave Engine, if you're not playing Back Row Hate, or if you're just not playing enough back or hate to get through the opponent's dark bribes and judgments and shit, you will lose to Mystic Mind Burn. Thank God it didn't top nationals, but I hope to God that Mystic Mind still gets banned because let's be honest, a lot of decks right now are playing through copies of Mystic Mind. You look at Sword Soul and Sky Striker, the, the decks that came in first and second respectively, we're both playing three copies of Mystic Mind each. So 
you know, you you got to respect the deck, but at the same time, there's so much back row hate now in Yu-Gi-Oh! And the fact that Sprite can play Deck Devi and fucking Eradicator, like, they go first and play Eradicator, the Mystic Mind player just loses. Or the Mystic Mind player bricks, and then, the, you know, they're just sitting there like, what do I do, George? <laughs> well, I'm going to get fucked up, George. Like, I'm not going to survive. So, it, it's a deck that should be respected. It, is it a pile of booty booty butt cheeks? Pretty much. Like, <sighs> Okay, cool. It's there. It's in the back corner going, hi, I'm degenerate. But other than that, like, I just figured I should mention it because it's something that you can technically play. I just hope to God that Mystic Mind gets fucking banned and then people have to go play Statue Stun or Grimmaju or just something better. <laughs> and at my number two and number one, I have the deck I fucking hate, like Mermel's back in like 2012, Salamangri. And then number one, I have Heroes. Now, before you click off and get all pissed off, let me explain first. So Salamangri, I don't care what anyone says. There are just some decks in Yu-Gi-Oh that I feel like I always fucking lose to and have a bad matchup, whether I'm playing the best deck or the worst deck of the format. That's fucking Salad. You let this deck pop off, it's got Rage, it's got Roar, it's got all this bullshit that it just, I feel, doesn't deserve to have. Like, the deck can go die in a fire for all I care. Like, this is what Mermel's were for me back in like 2012. Uh, like, I could be playing the best deck of the format and just lose to Mermel for no damn reason. Like, that's just my bad luck. But if I play Salad, or back in 2012's case, if I played Mermel, I would get my shit pushed in every time. So, like, <laughs> I have the worst luck in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, I've talked about that on the channel before. If you want to win with Salad, play against me for four rounds. You'll go undefeated. I don't know why. Like, I know the matchup. I know the choke points. I just lose because of it. My opponent pulls up Salaman Great Rage out of their left ass cheek. Like they could have no back row and all of a sudden they have a rage and a roar and I'm like, what do I do, George? So Salad is a very good rogue deck, very good control deck. You let this deck pop off and go first and you don't have a hand trap, you won't lose the game. They can get ashes like it's nobody's business. And I mean, as more and more cards come out, like Salad can kind of just slide in and take that extra cyber support or they can, you know, just come in and just wreck the meta if no one's prepared for it also want to give one more honorable mention i know i just mentioned heroes but i literally just thought of it as i'm making the video i have seen some math met decks topping i don't know what the fuck the deck does you should be prepared for it i just i don't know what any of the shit does i know apparently there's a card called like super factorial that carries the fucking deck while it's doing multiplication tables while you're trying to do combos i guess i don't know i just know that the deck has access to math met final sigma and I know if you drop that shit against Flunder, they fucking lose the game. Because I hated that shit when I played Flunder. <laughs> and of course, they would always drop it on me when I played Flunder, because that's my luck. But it is a deck that you should respect and keep in mind. Now, on to Heroes. Why do I have Heroes at number one? They got a lot of Neos slash Neospatian support in Power of the Elements, which I'm opening a case of tomorrow. So be sure to tune into the channel, subscribe, and hit the bell for that between 1230 and 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, but... With the new Neo slash Neo Spatian support, and they're also getting the Wake Up Your Hero stuff, I believe in Darkwing Blast, Heroes is just a deck in general, even without this new support, that can just OTK you out of left field. You know, I think about one of the guys at my locals, shout out to you, Kevin Perez, where he's playing like fucking Lightning Storms in his main deck. So like if he goes against like Eldritch game one, he can just lightning storm the fuck out of you and blow you out of the game. There's so many different ways that you can build heroes. And I feel like if people just aren't prepared for heroes, it can really throw people off. And I feel that this Neo slash Neo Spatial support should be respected because I've seen what the deck can do with lines of play and combos. And it's really, really damn good. That instant contact card is just generically good. Like that card's fucking bananas. So... I feel that heroes, especially in a metagame where people just aren't prepared for it, and if they're able to break boards going second or make a good enough board going first, it's really damn good. Like, I know some people are going to be like, oh, Avery heroes suck. Nah, man. I feel like heroes is kind of like Grimmage in the sense that it just sits in the back of the room watching everybody pop off with their plays, and it's just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start summoning Strauss, making searches. I'm going to fuck your play up, boy. So... Ladies and gentlemen, that is my top five slash honorable mentions of rogue decks. Again, I wanted to pick things that people may not necessarily be thinking about that could, could really pants people. And also, too, if you're kind of on a budget, some of these things might be a little bit easier to get a hold of than, you know, other top contending decks. So, guys, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed the video with a comment. And again, be sure to tune in tomorrow for that Power of the Elements case opening. It's going to be a live stream. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.